Now we've got to grips a little bit with the time value of money calculations, we can have a look at the last two investment appraisal techniques, net present value or NPV and internal rate of return or IRR. With NPV, the basic approach is to estimate the future incremental cash flows associated with an investment opportunity and restate all those future amounts to present value equivalents by discounting them. If we then add them all up and if the answer is positive then the project has a positive value in today's terms. Let's go back to our earlier example. A potential project involves an initial investment in machinery of $1.7 million and has these operating annual cash inflows. Year 1 $300,000, year 2, $550,000, year 3, $600,000, and year 4, $440,000. The machinery will be sold for scrap at the end of year 4 for $200,000. Now, let's work out the NPV for this project. Let's set up a table and fill in the cash flows. Next, we add discount factors from tables as follows. Let's assume we have a time value of money of 10% per year. Note the T0 discount factor is always 1. There's no need to discount this value as it's a cash flow happening today. In effect, it's already stated at its present value. Also, to enable us to do discounting calculations, we have to make a simplifying assumption about the timing of cash flows. We need to assume that cash flows that arise over a period of time arrive at the end of that period. So for example, the year one cash flows of $300,000 may well arise evenly over that first year. We'll assume that it all arrives in one go all at the end of that year at T1. Then. Multiply the discount factor by the cash flow to work out the present value of each cash flow. Finally, add up all the present values to get the NPV. We picked on 10% as the discount rate here for an example. The discount rate that should be used for investment appraisal is the investor's required rate of return, also known as the cost of capital. We'll come back to how we calculate this much later on in the course. Let's just take it as a given for now. The basic decision rule for an NPV assessment is that if the answer is positive, the project should be accepted. This is because the value of all the cash flows restated to present values is net positive. In other words, accepting the project will add to shareholder wealth. In this case, the NPV is negative and this would suggest the project should not be undertaken because to do so will reduce the value of the business by $85,300. NPV has much to commend it as a technique. First and foremost, it gives a direct answer to the question, what will be the impact on shareholder wealth if I take this project on? For example, an NPV of positive $100,000 means that if that project is taken on, shareholder wealth will be increased by $100,000 in today's terms. The value of the company's shares logically should increase by this amount in total. NPV is based on cash flows and considers the whole life of the project. However, it also has its disadvantages. It's not used that often in practice because it's not well understood by non-finance professionals. Alternative measures like accounting rate of return and payback period are more immediately accessible to understand. It needs a cost of capital to be able to calculate it. This is the discount rate that's used. This is relatively subjective and difficult to calculate, as you'll see later on. It assumes that cash flows arise at the end of the period. Operating cash flows often arise throughout the period. Before we move on to look at the internal rate of return, or IRR, let me briefly return to the payback period approach. 
One of the downsides associated with payback period was we said that it does not take account of the time value of money. We can modify the technique slightly to include discounting by discounting the cash flows first before working out when the cumulative cash flow returns to zero. This is known as discounted payback period or adjusted payback period. For example, suppose a project requires $1,000 investment today and will generate $390 each year for five years. The discounted payback period would be calculated as follows. Time, cash flow, discount factor, multiply the discount factor by the cash flow to give present value and work out the cumulative present value as it builds up over time. We can see in this example that the discounted payback period is approximately a little over three years. Lastly, let's now consider our final investment appraisal technique, internal rate of return or IRR. IRR is closely related to NPV. It's the discount rate that yields an NPV equal to zero. If we took the cash flows associated with a project and did several different NPV calculations at different discount rates and plotted the results on a graph, it might look something like this. The more heavily we discount future flows, the less they are worth in present value terms and the lower the NPV becomes. The IRR is where this curve crosses the x-axis. This is the discount rate where NPV equals zero. The way we interpret the IRR is as follows. If the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, then we would accept the project because this implies that at the cost of capital the project has got a positive NPV. Let's see why this is the case on the graph. With similar reasoning, if the IRR is less than the cost of capital, we would reject the project as this implies that at the cost of capital the project has got a negative NPV. IRR is sometimes known as the break-even cost of capital because that is the discount rate at which the project breaks even, in other words, where it has a zero NPV. So, to recap, compare the IRR with the cost of capital. If the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, then accept the project. If the IRR is less than the cost of capital, then reject. Let's have a look now at how we actually calculate the IRR. We actually estimate the IRR using a process known as linear interpolation. The process is as follows. Calculate the NPV at two different discount rates. It doesn't really matter what the rates are, just use ones off tables like 5% and 10%. What we will have done then is find two points on the curve as follows. Mathematically, we will draw a straight line between these two points. Approximately, where the straight line crosses the x-axis is more or less where the curve crosses the x-axis. We can work out exactly where the straight line crosses the x-axis. Let's label the graph first. A is always the lower percentage. B is the higher percentage. NA is the NPV at A percent and NB is the NPV at B percent and combine them together in this formula. You have to learn this formula for the exam. It's not given to you on the formula sheet. However, it may help you to remember it if you do the following. Starting with the A and read across, the formula spells out a banana NB. Let's calculate the IRR of our earlier example. Here's the project in question. A potential project involves an initial investment in machinery of $1.7 million and has these operating annual cash inflows. Year 1, $300,000. Year 2, $550,000. Year 3, 
$600,000 and year four $440,000. The machinery will be sold for scrap at the end of year four for $200,000. The NPV at 10% was negative 85.3. If we rerun the NPV calculation from earlier on at 5%, we get the following. So the IRR must be somewhere between 5% and 10%. Let's apply the formula. So the IRR is 8%. If the firm's cost of capital was 10%, we should reject this project as its return is less than the cost of its finance. You don't need to have a positive and a negative MPV for the formula to work. Suppose you picked 5% and 10% as discount rates and they both came out with positive MPVs. The formula will still work, all it's doing is the following. This is known as extrapolation. It's technically not quite as accurate as what we did before, but it's still perfectly acceptable for our exam you'll notice that the black line is still pretty close to the curve on the x-axis. IRR has several advantages. It's a percentage and managers like percentages because they can easily be compared to other alternatives. It's based on cash flows and includes the time value of money. You don't need to know the cost of capital precisely to use it. For example, if you feel your cost of capital is somewhere between 5 and 10% and you calculate the IRR as being 18%, then you'd be safe in saying let's go ahead as 18% is higher than the entire range from 5 to 10%. However, there are some problems with IRR. As a percentage measure, it always begs the question, percentage of what? For this reason, you cannot use it to compare two different projects. For example, suppose project A has an IRR of 40% and project B has an IRR of 20%. It looks like project A is preferable. However, suppose I now tell you that project A gives you a 40% return on a dollar and project B gives you a 20% return on a million dollars. Clearly, Project B would make you wealthier, but IRR indicated Project A. We're assuming with the basic decision rule that the project involves an initial outflow followed by years of inflows. This is known as a traditional project. This is what gives the curve on the IRR graph its downward slope from left to right. Other types of projects will yield different shape curves, hence the decision rule would need to change. For example, if a project consisted of an initial outflow, several years of inflows, and then a big outflow at the end, such as site cleanup costs, then the IRR graph may look like the following. And that's just one example. There are many possible graphs depending on the pattern of the cash flows of the project, which makes the basic decision rule of, if the IRR is greater than the cost of capital then accept the project, unreliable. One final disadvantage of IRR, and this is a technical point, the IRR calculation assumes the cash flows that are generated early on in the project are reinvested at the internal rate of return. This is known as the reinvestment assumption. There's no reason to assume that this will be the case. Cash flows that are earned early on in the project are generally extracted from the project and something else is done with them. Investment appraisal, and especially NPV, is a highly examinable topic. Take time to get grips with it as a subject and work through plenty of question practice. We'll continue to build on the NPV idea in the coming videos.